James wants to pray for us tonight. Gracious Heavenly Father, we just come before you and thank you. Lord, we just ask that these offerings that we offered up to the betterment of your kingdom, Lord, that you just use them as your discernment. Father, we just ask this message that Pastor Dave brings, just touches each one of our hearts in the way it needs to, teaches us, and allows us to change, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, we've been on a series about the gospel, the pure book of the gospel. Romans 1 16, Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Everyone who believes, the Greeks and Jews, Paul at one time was ashamed, deceived. He was introduced to the true gospel, Jesus Christ, and it radically changed his life. And so now he went out spreading the gospel, the good news around the world. And without shame, now he's shifted to being proud of the gospel. So the gospel is the power of God, the antidote for sin. It's also the key to eternal life. I mean, you know, we have to keep. Amen. Amen. Jesus says, I stand at the door and knock. You've been given the key to this world that we live in. We, we need some good news, don't we? Amen. The, good news, the gospel is the good news. The power of God. We're in a time now where, man, there's a world out there just not, doesn't have hope, but we, we have the answer. We've got the key. Right now, I can go to somebody that if they died today, they could be in hell the minute they quit breathing. I literally have that good news available, a key to give them that will get them from hell into eternal life. Isn't that amazing? Amen. And then we walk around all the time with no awareness of the power that we have and no heart for salvation. Bible says that he who wins souls is wise. Think about that. You know, the person that is out trying to win souls is a pretty wise guy. That's what Solomon said. He was a wise guy. So we're wise uh, to be able to do that. We've got our salvation. We've got our get out of hell free car. We've got our uh, you know uh, life or fire insurance. But other people, the world is going to hell in hand For people to go to hell. We're going to be held accountable some days up there for uh, not sharing the gospel. We got rescued, but he rescued us for a reason. So we got what we have, but we, we need to be grateful that we have it. I don't know. We're saved by grace. I don't have any clue why God chose me. God chose me. I, I didn't choose him. I, you know, I wouldn't even be here. Look at if he had not already found me. Okay? So we need to be grateful for that and, and realize that we have a powerful thing. First Timothy 2 4 says that uh, God desires that everybody is saved, gets saved, and comes to the knowledge of the truth. Increasingly perceive, recognize, discern, and precisely understand correctly and accurately the gospel of Jesus Christ. I was reading something today I stumbled on and I've been seeing all this stuff jumping off the page that I've never seen. And Paul says in Galatians 1 6, he says, I'm amazed that you are so quickly deserting him who called you by the grace of Christ. We've been called by God's grace. He summons. Not by anything that we've done. For a different gospel. These people were following after a, a strange gospel. A different gospel. It's really not another gospel, only there are some who are disturbing you who want to distort water down the true gospel. The truth. But if, even if we 
make a mistake or angels come to you from heaven and should preach to a gospel that is contrary to what we've been preaching to you already, the truth, accurate knowledge, the knowledge that leads to a saving knowledge. What we need is a saving knowledge, not a head knowledge, but a saving knowledge. Saving knowledge is, happens right here in the heart. It's an activity where we're born again. It's not up here. Saving knowledge means we have knowledge, but then it, we, we put it into practice. <clears throat> For with the heart, with the mouth we confess, <coughs> but it's with the heart that we believe that the encounter happens when we have a clear, precise understanding, and then it drops down in the heart, and then we're born again. <coughs> But even if we are an angel to preach a contrary to what we preach to you, let it be accursed. Shame on you, be, a, be cursed. As we have said before, and I say again now, if any man is preaching to you a gospel that is contrary to what we originally did to you, what Jesus Christ gave to me, Paul says, God gave Paul the power, the true gospel. And he's been preaching this gospel. And now all of a sudden these false teachers show up and they're preaching a different kind of doctrine. Let them be accursed. He says, for now am I seeking the favor of men or of God, or am I striving to please men? If I were still trying to please men, I would not be a bondservant of Christ. For I would not, I would have you know, brethren, that the gospel which was preached by me is not according to man, for I neither received it from man, nor I was taught of man, but I received it through a revelation of Jesus Christ. So, so Paul was in his own kind of religion to see he got a revelation from God about the true gospel. He handed to Paul the true gospel. Paul took that gospel and he's beginning to preach this gospel. And now in Galatians he's seeing these people that were saved by that gospel and he sees now these false teachers deviating and leading people away to a different doctrine. I mean, you know, a different doctrine ain't no doctrine at all. A different gospel, I mean. Amen. <clears throat> Painful one gospel. Amen. But these false teachers now, I, I learned today a little bit about Timothy and, uh, and Paul and how they talk about these false that False teachers weren't necessarily like blatantly evil wolves. Some of them probably were, but a lot of them were just people that were beginning to take uh, the gospel uh, that is God centered. And they begin to twist it and pervert it, water it down and dilute it to a man-centered gospel. And Paul's saying, hey man, you know, if, if you if you are don't get caught, don't be led astray, don't get caught up in something fun that's not the truth. We've already got the truth gospel. Let those people be accursed. <coughs> so we wanna we wanna make sure that we're staying gospel centered. Very few churches today, <coughs> you know, we've gotten away from just preaching the gospel. Yeah. You know, I'm guilty of it. I'm not an evangelist, but so this is why we're doing this. You know, we're going to get into the Word. We're going to do an expository uh, teaching of the gospel. And uh, so let's turn to our text tonight, which will be in Ephesians chapter 2, 1 through 10. Does everybody have a sheet that I had that last week? Matt, you have one? Anybody not have one? If you look on the left, it's New American Standard. On the right is... The <laughs> That's just, you really don't know. So we're going to break this up. There's, there's really... <coughs> really like four dispositions in here. We're just going to cover it. So we talked last week about, first week we talked about good news, bad news, and then good news. Last week we cut it short, this bad news and good news. So we have the first dispensation, which is verses one through three, which is talking about our old position. Romans 3 says there's none righteous. No, not one. That's talking about a person that is unregenerated. There's not a single person that is in right standing with God. We've all sinned. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. So the first dispensation is it was, I'm going to talk tonight about the big crossover. So first, you need to see that there's 
two sides to the cross. We have the death and the life. Bad news, good news. Our old position and our new. So Romans or Ephesians 1 through 3. We'll talk about the bad news first. Before we talk about the good news, because some people don't even haven't even got the good news. Because they're still lost in the bad news, still heading to hell, are you with me? People don't like to talk about the bad news. Grace, hyper grace teachings today, which you know, all prosperity in the right way. It is way different than what's being preached today. It's a lot of false doctrine with the hyper grace. And people don't want to talk about the wrath of God. They want to talk about children of wrath. That's, that's what we're going to talk about tonight. It's definitely not going to be an ear tickling kind of, but it's the gospel of Jesus Christ. Are you with me? Amen. Amen. I'm going to give it to you the best I can without fear and trembling. You know, if it keeps you from going to hell, then praise God. Praise the Lord. Factories, hellfire, and brimstone, and maybe we, maybe that's what we need. We need some preachers out there today that will stand up here and spit some fire, okay? Yeah. Put some fear of God in people. Yeah. Lord knows, people like to say they're being, they're buying right into this stuff, and, and it's, it's, it's scary. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to come back here and uh, try to do this thing right. So anyway, Ephesians two, chapter two, verse one. It says. There's three, what we call, indictments here. Why we're on the wrong side of the cross. He says, and you were dead in your trespasses and sins. In which you formerly walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. Among them too, we all formerly lived, that was our habit, that was our continual practice, in the lusts of our flesh, indulging in the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath. So there's three indictments here. And the first one is that we were dead in our trespasses. <coughs> we had been indicted of sin. A holy God. We were eternally separated from God. Genesis 126, God created man in our, his own image. And then in chapter 2, verse 16, he says, Then the Lord commanded the man, which Adam and Eve, he says, From the image tree of the garden you may freely, <coughs> you have free choice, you have free will. All this is yours. You can indulge, rule, take dominion. <coughs> But from the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day you do that, you will die. You will go from being spiritually alive to having a relationship with me, a bridge, a healthy bridge to a broken bridge. Sin will separate you because I'm a holy God, and I can't live upon sin. So you're free to do whatever you want, but in the day you do that, we got a big problem. we got bad news. So we got good news, but if you violate, if the, and you use your free will, and you violate that then we got, you got bad news. So we all sinned, we all fell short of the glory of God, we all entered into bad news, even before we were born. We were born in being children of wrath. We were a death sentence, we were a dead man walking. And there's not one thing we could do about it. We were hopeless and we were powerless, and we were in a state of condemnation. Building that's been condemned by the city has been roped off, sign put on it, unsafe, uninhabitable, condemned, useless. Uh, judgment has been made. Tear it down. It's useless. It's dead. We were in that same position. We were enslaved to evil. Says we were, we were, of 
according, we were walking according to the course of this world, the pattern of this world. We were, we were being ruled by the devil, under the dictates, under the influences. The devil was my daddy. I was running with the devil, as Van Halen used to say. I was at the mercy of my passions and emotions. I was indulging in the flesh and the desires of the mind. Turned over to them. And it says that in number three, is we were by nature children of wrath, even as the rest, even before we were born. The Amplified says we were by nature children of wrath, our heirs, inheritors of his indignation, like the rest of mankind. So when Adam and Eve sinned, they were kicked out of the garden. And because we come through the loins of Adam, everybody born from that, everybody, every seed that came out of that, which means we all sin because they sin. When they jump the fence, we all jump the fence in rebellion and defiance. And so we're all, we were born into sin without even, we didn't even do anything wrong. Just born into it. We were in that old position. We were dead. And it says we were children of, of wrath. So God or the Trinity, triune activity I call it, created man in their own image and there was this healthy relationship. Man chose to sin and that sin separated us from God. God was here and Mankind was here. God had made a decision. Romans 6 23 says that the, the, the wages, penalty, that God hands down. The moral indictment uh, is death. The wages of sin, when God says, is death. That means eternal separation, damnation, headed to hell, not a thing you can do. Lake of fire. <clears throat> For eternity. Forever and forever and forever. And forever and forever. Forever and forever. And forever. Can you wrap your hands around forever? Wow. Makes you want to run out and give somebody the key. Okay. But it says that we were children of wrath. That word wrath is a word called O R G E or I guess is how you say it. It refers to God's attitude. How many of God gets attitudes? God's emotions. Has emotions. It's his strong feeling or attitude towards sin. It's his impulse. It's the fury, the full fury of his anger and his rage and his hatred towards sin. His hostility, fury. Anger. God hates sin. God is a holy God. And he can't have anything to do. He's holy and we're called to be holy. And when we became unholy because of sin, he, he had to separate himself. He couldn't, he couldn't be true to his just character and his nature. He continued to have fellowship when he already said, if you do this, it's on you. People say, how can a holy God, how can a God of love send somebody, somebody to hell? No, you send yourself to hell. Okay? I hate to tell you that. You have a free will. You have a choice. We're going to talk about that. Good news here. But that full fury, that wrath was being poured out. And there's not a thing we can do. We were condemned and we were headed 